Hi there! Welcome to this new video on the Shiridu channel for the Pangwang Parade Quilt Along. My name is Irene and we are in the middle of the Pangwang Parade Quilt Along and in this video I would like to explain how to do the applique of the eyes of the Pangwangs. Um, it, I, the technique I'm using is raw edge applique and I'm stitching that with my machine so in this video I'll t just take you step by step on how, how I attach the eyes to the penguins so you can follow along. Let's start with what materials you need. So you need a penguin block that is finished and a little piece of black fabric for the eyes. In the pattern you find different eye combination and this is the um, 100% scale of what you need. So these are the images that you can trace and these are just combination of what you can make with them. Uh, then you need a pen or a marker, uh, paper scissors and I use Steamazim, uh, Steamazim 2 for uh, applique. So like I said I'm using Steamazim 2 and that is a double adhesive and you are going to draw on the side with the yellow markings. So that is the side you will be drawing on. Um, let's see what kind of eyes I am going to do. I will do this combination. So then I will need one big eye and one like that. And you need to keep in mind that you have to do it mirrored. So if you want it to turn out like this, so like this in this penguin, then you need to draw one of these that is symmetrical and then you need to draw this one. I like to use a marker um, since the steam seam has kind of a structure in it uh, and when I use a pen I have to press a little bit harder and then my lines just are a little bit more wobbly and um, yeah that's why I like to use a marker and I'm just going to cut on the outside line of my marker. So that's one. And then the other one. Quite a lot of shadows on my uh, on my paper. I'm filming this in the evening, so I um, have some artificial lightning in here. But I'm sure you can follow along just fine. Um, yeah, so here's the other eye. Then I have two eyes uh, ready for applique. Then we need our patch of black fabric. And I'm just going to cut this roughly to size. go and then you can peel away the back layer of the steam seam. It's always easier said than done. Oh there we go. So make sure that when you peel it away you just check that the sticky size side stays on so the paper you peel away is not sticky at all. Um, yeah and then you can already see here I think the texture a little bit what I was talking about and that is the the sticky stuff so um, it won't um, some uh, double-sided ad adhesives uh, are only sticky uh, after you iron it but this one is already sticky um, now so without ironing it stays in place just like that and for me this stays in place well enough so I will just leave it press it a little bit and then cut it out. You don't have to press it um, after this step. So with some double-sided adhesive um, there is no sticky side so you will just draw on it and then place it on the fabric and then press it the first time. Then you will remove one of the paper layers and uh, place it at your project and then press it again to make it stay in place. But I think those um, 
are a little bit harder to apply and I will show you why in just a sec but here's the first eye cut out just as easy as that let's cut out the second one there we go Oops. almost there yes there we go so two eyes let's bring in the penguin Hi there, little buddy. So now I can put them in place roughly where I want them. And the, the awesome thing about steam seam, I think, is when you pull away this paper layer, so then both our paper layers are removed. Here we have a sticky side as you can see it is already sticky so I haven't pressed anything and it is already sticky so when I put it now in place uh, I can just move around move my project around and it will stay in place and I can also remove it and um, place it re replace it where I want it to go so that is awesome um, some other double-sided adhesive that I used before uh, needed pressing before it sticked so then you needed to place your um, fabric pieces and then very carefully transport it to your ironing board or only place it when you were at your ironing station uh, because when you would move this and um, that would not have the sticky side then it would really easily um, shift yeah so that is why I really like this so I put it in place, you can see how it looks, and uh, replace it. And when I am happy with the location, the placement of the eyes, then I will just give this a nice good press and that will be very secure. So just to be sure and give you all the information in the video, I checked the instructions at the Steam Asim packaging because it's called steam a seam and I never press with steam so I was wondering why that was and in the instructions I found that you can press it as long as you want which I love because some other double sided adhesive uh, don't really take too much heat so you, sh you need to make sure that you press shortly uh, just for a short amount of time but here it says press 30 plus seconds um, if you're using cotton fabric uh, and use the steam and the fun thing it is that uh, it explains why you need steam. So uh, if you experience resistance, gumming of your needle or thread breaks when sewing, fuse again, heating all areas with steam. So um, it is temporary, the temporary adhesive is water soluble. And that's why you use steam to uh, solu solute. Well, <laughs> make the adhesive dissolve. That is, uh, that's an interesting thing. So I didn't do that. I did not. Let me just pick up the camera for a second. A little bit easier to talk like this. So I never use steam. I don't have water in my iron uh, here in the studio. Um, but I didn't experience any gumming of my needle or uh, breaking of the thread. But it does make sense. It's called steam a seam. So uh, yeah, if you do use steam, then the sticky stuff that might be in there um, will disappear. So um, really clever product, I think. Um, yeah, let's go and press this. Well, nothing very interesting uh, with my uh, pressing technique I guess so it says 30 plus seconds so you can leave it on uh, pretty long I'm not timing it because the last time I did it I didn't press that long and it was all just fine uh, we are going to stitch around it so this step is just to keep it in place and I don't want to burn my pretty penguin uh, I guess the the cotton can take that heat as well, but uh, it should be pretty much in place right now. Let's see. 
a little wiggle because it's too hot. Yeah, that is not going anywhere. So that is in place. Let's sew this. My favorite part of machine applique. So let's first set up our machine. Normally I would put in black thread for uh, appliquing the eyes because then the thread won't show and well, it's uh, really pretty like that. But for now, I'll just use a, a teal thread so you can probably see a little bit better what I will be sewing. So there, that thread is in place. Just need to put on a different foot. Not my zipper foot for this. And the foot you want to use is uh, some kind of open toe foot. Um, this is a 20C, um, preferably on my Bernina 770. I would use a D foot because that has this little slot in the back and that works with the, um, the thing that you see popping down here. That is the top transport. Uh, the top, um, yeah, kind of the feed docks, but then on top. Mm -hmm. But I don't have that one, so the 20C will do fine. I like the open toe uh, idea because then you can really see uh, where you're where you're going. And um, the other thing you want to check is if your stitch blade has the wide slot. So on my Bernina, that is a nine millimeter um, slot. Yeah. So that is the setup. Now let's find a pretty stitch on my machine. You have a few options for um, stitches, so you could go for a zigzag stitch, um, but I like to use a blanket stitch and I store that, yes, over here. So here you can see right away on the screen the size of the stitch. So that is, if you work on a Bernina like this, in your screen you see the true size. So that is the stitch that I use for uh, the other eyes. So it's a blanket stitch and then I made it a width of 3 and also stitch, stitch length set to 3. And I will leave my needle in a needle down position. Um, yeah, so that's the setting. Let's... Uh, See if, if this still works uh, fine. You never know during a demonstration. So um, yeah, there we go. So I'll position you a little bit above the stitching, zooming in. Yeah, I guess that is close enough. Let's see if I can still find my pedal. Yes, okay. So when you are working with a black thread, you don't, yeah, it, it's easier because, uh, well, you uh, don't see the thread um, color on your fabric. But here you can see I'm working with blue. So what I'm going to do is just make a few stitches to start. There we go. Oop. That is, it looks really big with my blue thread. I think this is a little bit bigger than what I like. So I'm just going to um, make the stitch length a little bit smaller. Set the width to two and also the length to well, a little bit over two. Um, of course, it's always better to uh, do this on a test piece first. So, what you like, what you mm, are going to pay attention to is that um, your needle is always in a needle down position on the edge. So, um, when you stop, I want to turn a little bit. I never let my needle stop over here because when I then turn the little line that it's making perpendicular to the edge of the eye, um, yeah, it's not going to 
match so to say so I always like to stop in this position then rotate a little bit and make a new stitch so you can also stop here rotate a little bit then make that sideways stitch and the key here is to just go really slow take it stitch by stitch and um, make your way all around the outer edge of your shape so when you have a bigger shape then this whole process goes a little bit faster of course but for such a small small shape and tight curves it's nice to go stitch by stitch and nice and slow So let me see if I can do a stitch like this and then turn it so I can show show to you later on why I don't do it like this. So uh, I will make another stitch like that. So turning while it's inwards and not on the outer edge. That is not going to be a pretty corner, but it's nice to show the, the difference. And again, when you use matching thread, it all is it's fine, it doesn't really matter. to see with the camera in front so now I'm getting close to the edge uh, to, to the to the end so I'll make another stitch and then hold the back stitch option and then let the machine cut off thread okay this is not going to be my most prettiest work of all um, let's see Yes, I can show you. Here we go. So here are the two stitches I made differently. And as you can see, that little line that is here, a line, becomes a kind of a V. So that's why I always stop at the outer edge and then uh, rotate my work. Because when you stop in the center, then it will make a, a little V and that nice um, straight line disappears yeah so <laughs> this is a little bit messy I wasn't paying too much attention anymore um, yeah and you can see that these first stitches were a little bit bigger uh, and here I used the two I'm not sure if it's two millimeter I think two millimeter um, well stitch width I set to two and the stitch length I set to 2.3 um, yeah uh, this will look really pretty, I promise, if you use <laughs> matching thread. Um, yeah, and then this one is a little bit more challenging, but I'm sure you can do it as well. Um, and the process is just, it's just the same. So let's lower my needle all the way to the edge. Yes, there we go. And then just make a few stitches. Um, wait. Let me bring up my thread. Otherwise, it would be a little bit messy. I'm just going to bring up my bobbin thread. I normally just start stitching, but bit better to do this there we go okay a few stitches and now we can sew
And what I'm going for is trying to make those inward stitches kind of perpendicular to the outer edge. I try to do that. It's not always really possible in such tight corners, but that's the look I'm going for. So on these straight edges that's easier to accomplish. And then in the next curve, ideally I stop inside the curve and then turn it. Uh, and then I trick it a little bit so that it goes... I need to have one stitch now on the edge, so I'll just hand turn it to make that possible. Yeah, and now it needs to go sideways again. Yes. Those tight uh, curves and corners are just a little bit tricky. But when you go slow and go stitch by stitch, you can do it. So here you also see that on this edge I rotate after almost every stitch. And then we have a straight apart again, which is a little bit easier. Time to rotate. lovely is if this would match up yeah pretty much so I'm now pressing the back button neat okay let's flip it up take my tiniest scissor to <laughs> cut these threads there we go okay this looks okay there we go so I think the edges here, this was my second uh, curve. Looks a tiny bit better than this, but this is, oh, we're looking so closely now with contrasting thread. That's not something you're going to do in your project. Just use a black thread and you'll be fine. Um, this is perfectly in place, so even when you go and wash this, uh, it will stay in place nicely. Using a zigzag stitch uh, might be a little bit more uh, sturdy or durable. So if you have a project that is going to be washed often, then you could just go for a zigzag. Um, yeah, so that is, uh, that's it for placing the eyes, I guess. So that is how I do it, how I place the eyes of the penguin with a raw edge applique. Um, I hope you're going to try this and give your penguin some eyes. Uh, let me know in the comments below if you have any questions or if you do, do it completely different or have some other tips and tricks. Uh, we all love to learn from each other. So uh, please do feel free to leave your comment down there and uh, happy sewing. See you in another video. Bye!